Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Here comes the junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. It is run by Joe, come and be his guest at the junction. Here's our lady MD, she's as pretty as can be at the junction. Petticoat Junction. you're talking about. Well, good. Maybe you've reformed. <laughs> oh, no. Joe, you're behind this. <laughs> okay, okay. How long did it take you to teach him how to mooch? <laughs> I didn't teach him. No, you just set a bad example for him. I feel for you. Hanging around him, you're going to grow up to be a delinquent dog. <laughs> I wonder who that is. Looks like old Hank Thackeray from the Pixley House. Yeah. wonder what he's doing over here. No, and Hank, I know he ain't over here to inquire about our good health. You can say that again. Hi, Tucker. Hi, Thackeray. Carson. Hi. Glad to recognize the front of your store, Tucker, when I drove up. You've made some vast improvements. Oh, thanks. Where'd you take down the hitching post? <laughs> <laughs> Quite a while ago, I had no need for it. Not too many jackasses were coming around. <laughs> You like that, huh, Bubba boy? How's the Shady Rest coming along? Did you finally get running water? Is that only when it rains? Zachary, if you're through exchanging pleasantries, maybe you'd like to tell us why you came over here. Well, I'll tell you why, but you're going to like it. I drove over in my new jitney, which is going to put the cannonball out of business, which in turn is going to put the Shady Rest Hotel out of business. What are you talking about? I'm going to prove to the county commissioner that my jitney can make better time between Hooterville and Pixley than the cannonball can. Well, you're talking through your wig. Yeah, the, the, your jitney has to go the long way around. Through Crabwell Corners, over Mount Piney, through Rocky Ridge. I know that, but I can still beat the time of the cannonball. And when I convince the commission, it'll be bye-bye, cannonball. So long, shady rest. You'll never beat the cannonball. You want to bet on that? You darn toot, and I want to bet on it. Okay, name it. Shady rest against the Pixley house. It's a deal. No, no, no. <laughs> you mean to say his jet can beat the cannonball? Well, I don't think so, no, but betting an entire hotel? I'd like to see you keep the bet within reason. Well, maybe you're right. Well, bet Sam's store. Yeah, well, I... <laughs> Go! <laughs> Dang, you ain't got much faith in the cannonball. I'm waiting, baby blimp. Put up or shut up. Okay, I'll tell you what. If I lose, I'll come over and bellhop at the Pixley house for 30 days. If you lose, you come to the Shady Rest and bellhop for me. You're on. When do we hold the race? This coming Saturday. Okay. Saturday it is. I got only one problem. What's that? Where to find a bellhop uniform big enough to fit you. <laughs> Cannonball running these days, Wendell. It's never run better, Joe. I'm glad to hear it. It's coming Saturday. I'm putting you and the cannonball in a race. Oh dear. 
You're racing Thackeray's Jitney from Pixley to Hooterville. Racing the Jitney? Why, how could it possibly beat me? It has to take the county road, and that's the long way around. That's what I like to hear, Wendell, the old confidence. Come on. While you're taking me to the Shady Rest, we'll give her a trial run, see how fast we can make it. We have to go around Dead Man's Curve, you know, Joe, and the fastest I've ever taken that is 12 miles an hour. No, Wendell, you've done better than that. Remember the time I told you to rev it up and we went around at 18 miles an hour? I went around at 18 miles an hour. You fell out of the cab. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we'll do the best we can on the curves, but let's see how fast we can make it. We got a lot at stake. In what way, Joe? If the Jitney wins, it could mean the end of the cannonball. Oh, no, it can't possibly happen. We can't put this old iron horse out to pasture. Not only that, I'll be breaking my back bell hopping for 30 days. <laughs> Grundy's chickens that were on the track. Then, so she wouldn't feel that he was mad at her, he parks on Willow Creek Bridge and catches a trout for her. There's another half-hour shot. Well, Wendell is sweet. Yeah? Well, sweet don't win races. Then further on down the track, we've got to stop for Chuck Gunderson. He's moving his still again. And you know, he makes liquor for medicinal purposes only. Well, it must work. I haven't made a house call up there yet. <laughs> what are we going to do? If the cannonball loses the race, it could be the end of the shady rest. You know it. Since I'm stuck with Wendell, I've got to take drastic steps. Somewhere or other, I've got to build a fire under him, train him like a fighter for a championship fight. eating an apple on the day before the big race. Joe, we're in splendid shape. The cannonball's in tip-top condition. And with a little luck, we should be the winner. Yeah? Well, I'm not trusting the luck. I got the clincher right here. Oil. But, Joe, the cannonball burns wood. I know, I know. The hotter the fire you build under the boiler, the higher the pressure goes. That makes the train run faster. That's the general principle, yes. Okay. So we pour oil over each chunk of wood, let it soak overnight, we got her made. But, Joe, I personally went through every piece of wood I'm carrying. And I picked out the ones with the most pitch. I eliminated the greener pieces. You see, I tossed them over there. Well, that part's okay, but we're still going to pour oil over every chunk of wood in the tender. Well, if you insist. Well, I insist. We got too much riding on this race. Come on. It's a wonderful dinner. When will you better get up to bed? But, Joe, it's still daylight. Okay, but you better turn in pretty soon because I want you in good shape for tomorrow. Well, say, Doc, ain't there something we can shoot him with to make him go faster? You know, like to do the jockeys? <laughs> Hardly think so. Now, would you excuse me? I've got some work to do in my office. Oh, here comes our worthless opponent. That's worthy opponent, Joe. Hang around and find out. <laughs> well, well, Carson. I see you've decorated the lobby since I was over here last. What is it, early Halloween? <laughs> okay, Zachary. What do you want? Now, I've got a little message for you, Carson, that I thought would make you and your engineers sleep better tonight. Yeah? I was talking to the commissioner about the race, and he says he'll base his decision on whether to scrap the cannonball or not, on the outcome of our contest tomorrow. 
Oh, dear. Don't panic. The commissioner don't scare me, not as long as he's an honest and fair man. Well, I can assure you, Carson, they don't come any more honest or more fair than my brother-in-law. <laughs> I wouldn't worry, Carson. Maybe you could convert the place into a duck blind. <laughs> and Gibbs. Yes, sir? About the cannonball. They're looking for stuff to fill in Miller's swamp. <laughs> He shouldn't have said that. He's making me fighting mad. That's good. Now you go on up to bed and try and stay that way. Like your friend Carson's been up to some shenanigans. Green. What if I fill the tender up halfway with this green stuff? <laughs> this race. You know, I'll have Steve give me a bird's eye view from his plane. What's the matter with dog? Who knows? What's wrong, Stella? There is something wrong. Yeah, I can tell by the sound of his voice. Don't get all shook, girls. He probably just spotted a rabbit or something. Yeah, I suppose you're right. <laughs> Quiet, you. You'll wake Wendell. Tomorrow's a big day. statement about this fine rally? Joe, friends, I think, I think. We understand, Wendell. It's a tension-filled moment. <laughs> you girls like to give a cheer for the old cannonball? Oh, could I ask a question? How does the cheer go? Rickety-rack, rickety-rack, old cannonball, don't leave the track. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sounds so negative. Rickety rack for a train. <laughs> Are you kidding? It fits that bucket of bolts. <laughs> Never you mind. We'll do our talking where it counts. In the race. Hey, boy, Wendell. Get up there and let's get going. Get aboard the train, everybody. Who's going to start us off? Me. Oh, oh, no, you don't. We'll play this fair. I'll be the starter. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, what's the difference who the starter is? Well, then, if there's no difference, you be it. Me? You're the closest thing to being fair that I can see around here. Go ahead. Very well. I'll do my best. <laughs> This is it, the race. Joe, 
I can't move. Oh. Over train. He froze on me. <laughs> Come on, boy, let's go. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Wendell, Wendell. Oh, thanks, Joe. I needed that. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Garnish it with the chives and the lemon sauce? Indeed I did, just like you showed me, and it worked. Oh, Henry did come back to me. Her hired man. He didn't like her cooking and threatened to leave. Well, oh, yes. Sorry, we have a race to run. Oh, I understand. <laughs> Mrs. Grundy wasn't a nutty reason. If we can't be polite, what are we? Loser, keep going. <laughs> What's the matter? The pressure is falling. Throw on more wood. Well, I just did, however. Joe, it's green. Green? What are you talking about? I soaked them in oil myself, every one of them. Well, look for yourself. Haven't you thought of trying something lethal? This is lethal. Oh, it's for medicinal purposes. <laughs> I use it myself. <laughs> Maybe I should try it. No, I'll try it. Hey, stop it, Joe. <laughs> Joe, you can't do that. Joe, do you hear me? You can't do that. <laughs> he did. Do anything for green wood. <laughs> yeah, that does something. Hey, Wendell, get everybody aboard. Let's get going. Joe, what are you doing? Never mind. Let's get moving. <laughs> 
Boy, get aboard. going around Dead Man's Curve. He always does that. But he's all right. Landed in a haystack and waved me on to victory. <laughs> well, look who's here. Uh... Howdy, loser. <laughs> oh, don't talk to me. It's a pleasure. Inside, everybody, the treats on Sam Drucker. Oh, what about me? I'm out of gas. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, it serves him right. Forget him, Wendell. Oh, Sam, <laughs> ever a cheerful winner be. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gunderson, maybe you could help Mr. Thackeray out with some fuel for his car. Huh? Oh, oh, sure. Oh, sure. <laughs> I'd like to propose a toast to Wendell Gibbs, the greatest engineer since Casey Jones. Here, Wendell! <laughs> <laughs> this is a day. I found myself a legal profession. <laughs> Good for man or motor. <laughs> no. I'm gonna go straight. Eight of the million dollar movie. Laura's Hart and Hugh O'Brien star in Come Fly With Me. Now, stay tuned for Green Acres next here on TV 39.